case for your presentation. We'll now head over to, uh, to Arthur Ijs from the Department of Infrastructure and Water Management, and he will speak about Antarctic tourism and the Dutch position in the Antarctic Treaty consultative meetings, uh, the Netherlands polar strategy, uh, and the need for scientific knowledge to support policymaking. Arthur, the floor is yours. Thank you very much, uh, Dan. And uh, good morning, afternoon, and evening to all of you. It's good to see so many uh, familiar faces from all around the world taking an interest in, uh, in this research program. It's an honor for me to be here uh, talking to you uh, on, uh, on a dedicated research program on polar tourism, 18 months since we first uh, started thinking about that. And I will try to explain a little bit of the background uh, of this program also um, using the acronym. PT repair. It's polar tourism. So while Arctic tourism can be included, the focus is on Antarctica. Um, for Antarctica, as a consultative party, the Netherlands has a special responsibility and possibility to contribute to the preservation of the continent by ensuring that uh, activities such as tourism have no more or less than a minor or transitory impact. But that description even uh, raises a number of questions. Which impacts are we talking about? Single impacts, cumulative impacts, and how do we value impacts? I mean, we're 29 consultative parties and we have different value systems to, uh, to assess these impacts and the seriousness of impacts. Personally, um, I was quite shocked to find that even the eco-tourism slogan, leave on your, only your footprints, might even be inadequate for Antarctica. I, I read a, a report on, on one of the tourist sites um, that was closed for a number of years. And six years after it was closed, researchers could still find the actual footprints left on the vegetation six years ago. Um, and to me, that was an eye-opener. The Netherlands, in its polar strategy, um, welcomes tourism to Antarctica. It is important for the world to be able to experience its beauty and to be in inspired. I've never been there, but I always hear that those who return from a trip, they return as ambassadors for the continent. Now, that's an interesting uh, thought, but it also raises questions. How long does that effect hold? Um, and how does it translate into action? And what action would be most effective? And even if positive effects last, and even if it helps to influence policies regarding Antarctica, we cannot simply um, keep on creating ambassadors by simply shipping or flying them to Antarctica. That's in, unsustainable in itself. So we've heard a lot about the, the, the growth uh, of tourism already in, in several presentations. I won't go into, into that. Um, we've heard also about the diversification of tourism activities. And to me, we are actually facing a competition between tourist operators that is um, driving the search for more and new sites and for more and new activities. But I wonder, how does running a marathon in Antarctica uh, contributes to becoming an ambassador? New activities are being developed from riding motorbikes to helicopter skiing, running marathons, as I said, and an increasing number of ambassadors to be skip the troubles of a turbulent ocean passage and simply fly to Antarctica, adding pressure from more emissions, raising questions about research, uh, about uh, search and rescue, and incentivizing the buildup of permanent infrastructure. Is this the sort of competition that we really want? Or do we need to develop a more strategic picture of uh, a, a more strategic vision of uh, for Antarctic tourism uh, that is more predictable, more straightforward, and more directed towards experiencing 
the specific values and beauty of the continent. I mean, we're also faced with artists and other individuals that are putting Antarctica on their bucket list. Some for erecting art, others just for the thrill. People driving to the South Pole on a tractor. People wanting to open a snack bar on Antarctica. You name it, we've seen it. Is that the development we want? I don't think so. And these developments take place, as we heard from Case Basmeyer, in the context of a governance system that has many flaws. So we need more coherent international policies. We need actions from governments to back up the self-regulation from the industry and to take additional action where required. And it's very um, uh, modern to say, well, in, in post-COVID times, we need to build back better. But building back better starts with knowing where we come from, understanding the impacts we have and valuing those impacts. And it starts with defining what we actually mean by better. Where do we want to go? What are the responses that we need? We still do not have a scientifically and intergovernmentally agreed monitoring strategy for the environmental impacts of tourism. And SCAR has been invited to develop one. And I would invite all of you through PT Repair to contribute to that important task. Without proper assessment of impacts, responses are difficult to design and implement. So that we have, we face so many questions on that front. How effective is the current system of specifically, especially um, protected areas. How can we design a more systematic conservation strategy that helps to safeguard the wilderness values, biodiversity and ecosystem services alongside accommodating tourist activities? And what sort of activities do we actually want? And which ones are potentially most damaging? Should we have activity guidelines uh, much like the side guidelines that we that we currently have. So many questions to answer. Not a very big budget to answer them with, but that's the challenge that uh, I leave in your safe uh, hands. And I, yeah. I will encourage you all to engage in PT yeah. repair with your proposals. I encourage you to look for international okay. collaboration with SCAR, with IATO, with IECO, of course, we will look forward to it in a number of presentations, including, of course, our partners, the British Antarctic Survey and the Alfred Wegener Institute, um, and others. It is only together, in international collaboration, that we can work towards the preservation of Antarctica as a natural reserve. I wish you all the best in developing proposals. I hope this matchmaking event is stimulating and helpful for you. And um, I'm looking forward to reading the proposals and uh, seeing many of you in other fora. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arthur, for your presentation.